Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online. Psalms 125. And then you can get your Bibles ready for Luke chapter 4. All right. Psalms 125 says, And for those of you who are worried about what's going on, what's coming down the pipe, What's happening behind the scenes? Listen to this. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Now, I hope that's an encouraging word because what that says to me is no matter what is going on, no matter what, God's got his people. No matter what is coming down the pipe, no matter what pending danger is is hovering over the horizon, God's got his people. My question to you is, do you really trust him? Really trust him? Because I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes it's better to read what God says, to read his covenant promises, than to hear everything that's going on. One lady told me, I think it was two days ago, that she started having headaches because she kept the news going all day and all night. And she realized she had to stop listening to it because it was getting into her spirit. I'm trying to remember who that was. But anyway, (laughs) talked to so many people throughout the week. So what I want you to listen to is what God says, because no matter what, God has a plan. The world has its plans. But God has a plan. The devil has his plans. And yeah, baby, he's got some stuff lined up for you and me. But God's got his plans and it overrides anything the devil can do. It overrides any assignments of the enemy against his people. So what I want you to to keep in your heart, in your arsenal, in your pocket, don't leave home without it. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, cannot be removed, but abideth forever. No matter what, you cannot be removed and you will abide forever. Remember that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Psalms 91. So you remember that God's got his people, his love, his hiding place is the safest place to be. That's where all your provision is going to come from. That's where all your miracles are going to happen. That's where all your divine protection is going to be. Protection from danger seen and unseen. Like Lynn going down the road, hearing God say, say, Jesus, save me. And she said it with a question mark. And bam, the thing falls from a truck. And she doesn't get hurt. Her car doesn't get hurt. She's fine. She said it in time. She repeated the words because she was like, say, Jesus, save me. Jesus save me? I mean, you know, God's got the craziest ways. Me walking down Mountain View in the in, at nine at night, 
and these two guys or three guys are working on the car on the right and I want to stay on the left because I believe in keeping a wide berth from possible danger seen. <laughs> but there was a danger unseen I didn't know about. And the whole, I mean, God spoke so loud. Cross over to the other side. It wasn't a nice recommendation. It was an order. And I was, <laughs> I didn't have enough sense to be excited that I heard God's voice. And I'm questioning, cross over the other side. But Lord, those guys, I don't know who they, cross over to the other side. But Lord, cross over to the other side now. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. And the danger unseen, once I got over to the other side and obeyed God like I had some sense, was a big old burry, I mean, a, an ugly, furry dog looking like a big old bear, staring, glaring at me with a demonic glare. And I said, whoa, look what you protected me from. You have no idea what God's got you covered from. And how he's going to cover you. You have no idea how he's going to direct you. Who he's going to direct you through. Who he's going to provide for you through. You have no idea. Now, this is what I ask you. I ask you to go with me to Luke chapter 4. This is a reminder of who Jesus is, and it's a reminder of how God works through the craziest ways. Listen to this. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Hmm. It was the last time you ate nothing for 40 days. And when they were ended, he afterward hung, hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, what I notice is that Jesus batted those words down with the word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus said, un <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to the Jerusalem and said unto him and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee and to keep thee. That's a quote from Psalms 91. See, Satan knows the word too. And in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said that thou shalt tempt the Lord, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season, which means he's coming back. Yeah, Satan's always coming back for a second, third, fourth try. All right. And he taught, uh, and Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Ghost, this verse 14, unto Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth. I'm reading the whole story before I, I really break up and get into it. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up 
And as a custom was, he went into the synagogue on the seventh day and stood up for to read. And there was a there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That means Isaiah. Okay. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. This and listen to these words, so you know what's happening with him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearty, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it un again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Now, I'm stopping there. Now, we're going to go back over this step by step. Do you notice? Because some of you are going through some stuff right now. And you're wondering, when does it come to an end? When do I get my deliverance? Do you notice it says, when he was full of the Holy Spirit, that he was led into the wilderness? You notice the Holy Spirit led him there. Sometimes when you're going through, it's part of your preparation for ministry. We're in the last days now. Some of you are going to go through. The weirdest looking wildernesses out there. You know, let me just make my own words up. There are different types of wilderness. And you're going through your custom made, yours, that's custom made just for you by God. And the Holy Spirit is leading you through that wilderness. But notice it only lasted for a season. And when that time was up, there was a heavy anointing on Jesus. There was a power that he came out of it with. Because while he was in the wilderness, he was tempted of the devil. Some of you are tempted with money. Some of you are tempted with position. Some of you are tempted with power. Some of you are tempted with all kinds of things. You're going to prove yourself to the world who you are. You're going to let them know. You don't mess with me. Satan is trying to, to tie you up hook, line, and sinker into his little traps. He leads you through his pride, through uh, fear. He leads you through anxiety, ambition, greed, money, 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 money. And to you, money holds a higher level to you than God. Because you can't remember the last time God came down and put money in your hand. You can't remember the last time God took a fork, cooked you a meal, and put food in your mouth with his hand. So you see the dollar bill as your salvation. You see the dollar bill as your safety net. Think of that. And what you've done is put the dollar bill above the throne of God. In other words, you have dethroned Jesus and put that dollar bill in its place. So sometimes Satan will find the most cunning ways to tempt you. To not trust God. That decision is up to you. Let's move on down a little bit. All right. So now he's tempted. And Jesus is hungry and he's needy and he's weak. I mean, I don't know if he's weak, but I know he's tired. Because the angels had to come and minister to him. But listen to this. Jesus stood on the word the whole time. What are you standing on? 
Whose promise are you depending on? The promise in the word or people? Whose word are you standing on? Whose word are you hoping in? Hmm. Wow. All right. Let's move on down. All right. So now you see him come back to Galilee. He's full of power of the Holy Spirit. He teaches in the synagogue. And this is where he announces his ministry. And this is what a lot of us lose sight of. No matter what life throws at you, this is Patch 2 says, listen to this. No matter what life throws at you, what trap Satan has laying in wait for you, no matter what kind of tricks people are going to pull on you or how many promises they renege on, no matter how many lies are spoken against you, how many, how many grapevines are loaded with gossip, with gossip columns about your life that aren't even true or that are so, are, are so mixed up, it's all a lie anyway. Listen to this, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. When he read the book of Isaiah, he announced what he came on earth to do. He didn't just come to die on the cross. He came to do this. So no matter what life is throwing at you, no matter what's going on, no matter what the devil does, no matter what people do, guess what? He comes to preach the gospel to the poor. He's come to set to heal the broken hearted, no matter how many times you've been hurt, no matter who have hurt you, no matter who have put you down, no matter who is still putting you down, no matter who is still attacking you verbally, no matter how many attitudes you got to battle through, every bit of those hurts can be removed. Some of you, your wives, your husbands, your children have betrayed you have betrayed your love and your trust, have betrayed your loyalty. People you minister to have betrayed you. Guess what? God heals the broken heart. So if they betray you today, there's no need for you. If they betray you today at two o'clock in the afternoon, there's no need for you to be hurting at 2.30 today in the afternoon. Because as quickly as you ask God to remove the hurt, he can remove it in a matter of seconds. Happens to me all through my walk with the Lord. Almost from day one. I got saved September 6, 1981. First time I experienced God removing anger out of my heart was October 2000. I mean, October 1981. That day I was extremely angry because I thought people were messing with my father and I was going to go down to that place and get him out and bring him home. The Lord worked it out so I could take care of him, but he quiet, he got my attention with a song. And when I asked him to take the anger out, because if he didn't, I was going to go off. I'm not going to let them people mess over. The Lord knew me being a baby Christian. He gave me some added help, but he taught me something. And I lean on that for the rest of my walk with him. He showed me just because you feel it doesn't mean you got to keep it. You can chuck it, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. So what I did was after hearing the song, realizing God was talking to me through a song, wait on the Lord. I asked the Lord to take the anger out or else I'd be down at the convalescent home, getting him out, bringing him home. And within, listen to this, within 15 seconds, I felt all of my emotion deflating like a balloon that was, that was pinched to let the air out slowly, but I felt the air going out, out, out. And before you knew it, I couldn't find that anger. This was not even 15 minutes. This was around 15 seconds. See, life will throw you all kind of blows. It's just a given because we're living in a fallen, cursed world. 
but you're not cursed. But you live among wolves that are. And there are people of God that are still halfway carnal. And they will make your life a living hell if you let them. But every single time, they say that cutting word. They give you that cutting look. They do that little nasty, nasty. You look at them and under your breath, you say, Lord, take the hurt out right now. Take the hurt out. Don't even let it get in there. In the name of Jesus, please. And you will alleviate. I mean, you will eliminate so many hurt feelings because Jesus said out of his mouth, Healing, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. For some of you who feel stuck, you feel like there's no way out and, 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 and life has held you captive to preach deliverance to the captives. For some of you who have lost your way, you're, you're bewildered, you're, you're befuddled, you're, you're dumbfounded, you don't know which way is up. It's, it's like life has turned you and tossed you so much you don't even know which way is up, which way is down. You've lost your bearings completely. God will guide you because he says, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Some of you have been bruised for decades, let alone years, weeks, and months. Decades. Some of you carry the same scars you got when you were four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen years old. But guess what? He's able to remove that. So now we're dealing with what he can do with your past, right? He can remove every bit of that pain, y'all. And on top of it, he can go down to the root of your problem, be it rejection be it issues with abandonment, be it abuse, having been abused physically, psychologically, emotionally, verbally, however, you have been abused or through neglect. The bottom line is God can fill every one of those holes in your soul and he can remove the root of the problem so that you no longer walk around with hangups. Hmm. You no longer have to walk around flinching and jumping at everything that says boo in your life. Because when the root is gone, the insecurities are gone, you'll find things don't bother you hardly at all. Because the scar is gone, the wound is gone. So you're not overly sensitive to the touch of the enemy. Hmm, think about that. All right, moving right along now. So you see that he is to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, this is what happens when God has done the change in you. People look at you down the road, just like they looked at Jesus. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? <laughs> huh. What's up? Well, they'll look at you the same way when they see the change because you're no longer that little bundle of knots, that little bundle of nerves tied up, tangled up, all, all, all oppressed and, and insecure and fearful. And, you know, some of you don't realize you may be walking with the Lord, but you are, you got a very low self-esteem and you don't even know it because there are things God would love to shower you with. See, your blessings are not just on the other side. They're here too. Some of you are afraid to get blessings because you don't want the responsibility that comes with it. Why? Fear. And some of it is laziness. So when God sees you don't want it, he's not going to give it. There's some of you, as Pastor Cushman used to say, that are living way beneath your privilege. He had some big stuff lined up for you, but you said no. You said no. So what I'm trying to say is raise your sights, recognize who God is, and know he's got things for your life. And no matter what's coming down the pipe, no matter what Russia's going to do, no matter what China's going to do, no matter what the aliens are going to do, guess what? God's got you. 
There's nothing in heaven, and in other words, nothing in the stars, nothing in hell, nothing on earth, nothing in the ocean, nothing that you cannot see that God did not create. Remember that. And what God created, he will handle, baby. And he definitely created you and me. He definitely planned our destiny. And if you allow him, he can take you to the high places of this world. He can take you and make you so influential and so powerful, so impactful. I mean, he will make you, he will make you one of those people. A lot of people know your name by the impact you have on their lives. Why? Because you set aside all your limits. You didn't limit God. You didn't put God in a box and say this, but not that. I like this and I like that. You didn't put him through a, uh, a, what do you call those restaurants? A buffet style level of blessing. See, some people live a buffet style life with God where they say, okay, Bible says this, I'll do that. Bible says that and I ain't doing that. I don't like that. Mm -mm. No, that doesn't go. I ain't feeling that. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. You obey no matter what. But, Okay, set that aside because that's not my point right now. The bottom line is, who do you trust? What are you trusting in? See, he already said you will not be removed. He already said you're like Mount Zion. He's round about you, baby. He's got you covered from all sides, from dangers seen and unseen, from powers, principalities, all kind of stuff. And he's got blessings lined up for you. Right in the middle of chaos, God can bless you richly. But if you have limits on yourself, baby, there are a lot of blessings. When you get to heaven, you're going to find out why you didn't get those blessings. Not because God doesn't love you. Not because you don't have the favor of God. But because in your innermost self, you said no. And you said no because you don't want responsibility. You said no because you can't see yourself here or there or you feel like you don't deserve it. You said no because you feared something going wrong with something God gave you. Trust me, baby. Just like God won't give you more than you can handle, that goes both ways. That goes with problems in life weights and sorrow, and it goes with blessings and abundance. He's not going to give you what you can't handle. But what you refuse to handle, he's not going to go against your will. He'll leave you with your limits. See, my thing is, I'm, I'm removing all the limits. Lord, give me all you want to give me. Take me where you want to take me. If you want to take me to Italy, if you want to take me to South Africa, if you want to take me to the Virgin Islands, if you want to take me to Timbuktu, wherever you want to take me, I'm willing to go. Whatever you want to do with me, you want me to go and minister to the poor, I'm fine. You want me to go whisper in some king's ear what your word is for him and his country, I'll do that too, because I ain't got no limits on me. How many limits do you have on you? God wants to use you. He wants to take you places. He wants to move you, make you an earth mover and a world shaker, but you got too many limits on you. Why? My question is, who do you trust? In your limits? In your fears? In other people's promises? In the money? What are you trusting in? There's so much God can do with his people. Some of you are equally as qualified to be president of the United States or king or queen of another nation. Equally as qualified. Why? Not because you got all that going for you. Some of you are one of what God calls the least of these. Mm. But guess what? God will take the leastest and do the mostest. That's why you can't look at you. And when you got your focus on you, you are limiting God. Period. You're limiting God. If God decides to give me a 24-room mansion, I'll take it. 
I don't know how I'm going to keep it, but I'll take it because he's not going to give me what I can't keep. That's all there is to it. There may be more involved with it. There may be more responsibility with it. But guess what? If, if God equips me, no matter what it is, I'm up to the task and I'm willing. I will never, now, well, they say never say never. Let's say I hope I never tell God that's too much for me. I can't handle that. Because see, God knows you more than you know yourself. He knows me more than I know myself. I've learned that big, big time. But what you don't know, you will never know God better than he knows himself. And if God says, you're able, go do this, go do that. Mighty woman of God, mighty man of God, mighty man of valor. Guess what? You're, if he speaks it, you are a mighty man of valor. Like he did with Gideon, hiding, hiding all his goodies in the wine press, out of fear and intimidation. And the angel comes to him and calls him a mighty man of valor. We're like, what? <laughs> Little chickadee with all the feathers going. <laughs> yeah, guess what? He became that mighty man of valor and won all kind of battles, didn't he? Think about that. The Battle of Gideon, as he called it, the Lord, the Battle of the Lord and of Gideon. Well, he won that battle. Let's just keep it at that. So my point is what God has, he has much higher sights for all his people. We can do so much more than our little pea brains can even fathom up. That's why uh, um, uh, Ephesians says he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above, above all you could ask or think. So if you can't think it, it doesn't mean he can't do it. It just means your 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 hopes and your aspirations are too limited. They're too small. That's why God's going to lay some things on some of you and me that's going to be way bigger than you ever thought you would get or that I thought I would get. And it'll be so big, he'll have to put a team together to get it done. But guess what? He'll start it with you. If you get rid of those stupid limits. Because you're in God's way. You're hindering his hand. He's not going to operate outside of your faith. That's what I love about God. But the sad part for you. Is that means that when you get to heaven. You're going to find out all you missed out on. Because your faith was not there. Remove the limits. Allow God to do whatever it is he wants to do. Know he's got you. Through the good and through the bad, know that he's got you. If you're abandoned somewhere and you're laying up and you can't call for help, you can call out of your heart to God and ask him to send his angels to come rescue you. God can do whatever. He, he, can, he can do the impossible. With God, all things are possible. So take the limits off of your mind, off of your eyes. Remove the, 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 the scales, baby. There, there, there's too much. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is it? Is there anything too hard for him? He is God, the mighty one. Speaks the word and it gets done. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is it? Or is it just in your little pea brain? God bless you. Think about it. Pray on it. Get in that word. And let it build up your faith. Find out all that God is able to do. And remove the limits. In the name of Jesus. The sky is the, there is no sky. There is no limit with God. We always say the sky is the limit, not with God. There is no limit. There is no box. So go for it, baby. God's got you. 
Amen. Thank you.